Here's one that combines tension and friction. You've got three masses connected by a rope going up an incline plane at theta with a coefficient of kinetic friction mu k, and the whole system is accelerating up at a. And really the question is just find the tension, or in this case the tensions, because these are different pieces of rope that will have different tension. So it could get confusing since they're identical, so even though they have the same mass, I'm going to call them 1, 2, and 3. And I'm going to go ahead and assume the tensions might be different, so we'll have tension 1 in this section, tension 2 in that section, and tension 3 in that section. Up here is just reminding you that something is pulling on the rope. Right? So this could be your hand, um, and you're pulling applying a force FP to the end of the rope. Okay, so we want to figure out uh, all these tensions. So probably I would start with three body diagrams of all three masses. And we're going to do something different. We're going to do them all sort of parallel. Like we'll draw all three masses. One, two, three. Okay, so one, two, and three. And we'll start applying the forces all together. So let's start with the easy one, the weight. Mg, straight down, always. Mg, straight down. Uh, let's see, the next one we could do would be, well, they know they'll all have a normal force. What keeps it from falling through the ramp is the normal force is pushing back up like that. And I'll just call them N1, 2, and 3, because they're all being applied by the surface. So we'll just say this is N1. And two and three. What else happens in this situation is they're all being pulled up the ramp by their respective tensions. So that's T3, and that is T2, and that is T1. They're all having to oppose a friction force pulling them back. So we'll call that it's F kinetic um, FK. And I'm not going to label it 1, 2, 3, because we realize, let's start thinking about what's the same and what's different for all these. They all have the same weight down. And therefore, in terms of forces into the surface, the component of mg is really the only thing that the normal force has to balance. So since they all have the same mg, they're all the same theta, they all have the same normal force, actually. We take the subscript off of that. So the normal forces are all identical. Therefore, the kinetic frictions are all identical. We'll have the same force coming back here. FK, FK, that. So now we just got to solve for the tensions, for the whole thing moving. So let's, for that, let's think, we sort of already thought about perpendicular to the surface. That was how we got those normal forces all being the same, and how we'll just quickly plug in the value later. We care really about uh, parallel to the surface. You know, some of the forces parallel for each one is the mass times the acceleration parallel. That's the acceleration we're given, so let's leave it as parallel. And you might look at it and conclude all the tensions are the same. Because for each one, uh, Fk pulling back is the same, Mg component pulling back is the same. They each have a tension pulling this way, they each have the same mass, and they're each going at the same acceleration. So that would sound like the tensions are the same. So that's the initial sort of usual reaction, except that we left out some forces. So C hit pause. Can you think of what forces we left out? Maybe it was obvious to you. Okay, welcome back. Uh, we left out the tension pulling back. The reason the tensions are different is because this one is pulled forward by T3. This one's pulled forward by T2, but it's pulled back by T3. There's one more force in there. This one is pulled forward by T1, but it's pulled back by T2. There's another force in there pulling back. So that's what throws off the balance and makes the tensions not all the same. You may also, may also be thinking about FP. Don't we also apply FP to the front one? And remember, FP is what's applied to the rope. Here we're talking about forces applied directly to the mass. So FP is applied to the rope and establishes the tension. But it's not directly connected to the mass, so we don't worry about it. We're just told to find the tensions that would make this happen. We don't care about FP. In the end, it's going to be equal to the magnitude of, of T1. Okay, so now we really have all the forces. Now the equations will look a little bit different. We won't conclude all the tensions are the same. So let's start with mass 
three in the direction parallel to the ramp. T3 is positive. We'll say that's the positive direction. Parallel that way, perpendicular a positive that way. So T3 is pulling it up the ramp. Um, minus, there's a component of the weight pulling it down the ramp. So remember, all these weights actually have a component this way and a component that way. And theta is there. So it's the sign that's com the component down the ramp. So minus mg sine theta down. And then there's the friction pulling it down. And we know it's negative. We're doing magnitudes here. So we know it's minus fk. But we can go ahead and put in the magnitude for f kinetic. It's mu k times the magnitude of the normal force. But we're not going to write the y because we know the only two vectors are this way and this way, uh, normal and mg. And we know that um, it's not moving in the y. So these two are basically equal if we did all the details. And we know that's mg cosine theta. So one step, I'm going to do all the y kinematics and just write minus mu k times the normal force, which is mg cosine theta. Right? So there are your forces along the horizontal or you know, along the plane. And that's equal to ma, the mass of this one and the acceleration that's going up. Not so bad. And now, Let's look at number two, the second one. It's feeling a force up the ramp, T2. It's being dragged back by T3. And then the rest is the same. The weight component, mg cosine theta, or mg sine theta pulling it down, and the friction, which is also the same, mu k, it's the same normal force. So this part is all the same. Minus mu k mg cosine theta equals ma. Even the right side is the same because they're all going with the same acceleration and they all have the same mass. Let's look at one. One, t1 is pulling it forward. t2 is pulling it back. And then, let's see, the component of the weight down is again mg sine theta. And the friction force pulling it down is, again, mu k times the same normal force, minus mu k mg cosine theta, and it's the same mass going at the same acceleration. So that kind of looks like a mess. It's really three equations and three unknowns. There's an unknown, T2 and T1 are the three unknowns. And it's actually algebraically set up very conveniently this way, if you write it out in this sort of fashion, because you might notice that this term, this term, and this term are all the same for every one of them. So if you wanted to see it more simply, you could move these over here and just call it k. I mean, it's just a number. It's the numbers you were given. Say if it were numerically to be given the mass, you would give them uk. You're looking for the tensions. So you could write this t3 equals k. t2 minus t3 equals k. I could have myself. And then t1 minus t2 equals k. They all equal the same constant. If we said k was equal to what? ma plus mg sine theta plus mu k mg plus sine theta. Interesting. Well, in that case, you're done. Here, you have t3 in terms of the symbolic answer. t3, you know, let's simplify it a little bit. We could pull out an m. I guess that's all we can simplify. It's going to be equal to mass times the acceleration you were given plus g sine theta, which you're all given plus mu k g cosine theta. So there's t3. If t3 is k, and you pull it over here, then t2 is 2k. So k plus k is 2k. Oh, well, then t2 is that same thing with 2 in front of it. a plus g sine theta plus mu k g cosine theta. And if t2 is 2k, you bring it over here, 2k plus k is 3k. Oh, t1 is just 3k. So it's 3mA plus g sine theta plus mu k g cosine theta. And there's your three tensions. So you find that it is true that you'll have the biggest tension here, and then less tension here, and less tension here. Just like if you hung three masses straight down and was asked, or we were asked, what's the tension between each mass, 
the bottom mass is the one you would get first. You would say it's equal to its weight. And then the next one would be twice the weight, the next would be three times the weight. All we do have, have now is a more complicated version of the weight because it's a combination of friction and gravity at an angle. That's really all that's happening. Um, if, now I made this real convenient that it worked out this way. Okay? If these masses had been different, then symbolically it would just be a messier thing to handle. If the masses were all different, then these wouldn't be equal to the same k's. You still could have solved it, though. Instead of just being k, 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 it would have been like k. It would just have been a big series of constants getting longer and longer. If the problem had been numerical, then it's not so bad. You just start plugging the numbers for all this stuff. It's not so bad. So really, this strategy would work in any case. If you remember, all the forces have to 